What's up guys, uh, Coach Doyle back here for round two, 15.2. Uh, tips, tricks, strategies, uh, technical consideration uh, to try to maximize your success in 15.2. Just so you all have a, a brief overview of what the workout is, it is for as long as possible uh, in three minute increments in ascending ladder of overhead squats at 95 and 65 pounds and chest to bar pull-ups. Round one is 10 of each twice. Round two is 12 of each twice. Round three is 14 of each twice and so on and so forth until uh, you can no longer complete the work in the time frame of the three minutes. Um, so for example, round one is zero, zero, zero on the clock until three minutes. And in that time you complete one round of 10 overhead squats and 10 chest bar pull-ups and then a second round in sequence. And then you get to either rest or depending on your level of fitness, go right into the next round at 300 to 600, which would be 12 of each two times through. What is this workout about? Um, in a different fashion, but similar muscle groups, your shoulders and your grip are gonna be the biggest um, limiting factors here in terms of your anatomical pieces involved in the workout. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you some tips and our pacing and everything is gonna be based on maximizing your ability to save your grip and your shoulders. If you can save your grip and your shoulders and you are relatively fit, you will get a decent score here. Okay, um, let's just go over some technical considerations uh, for the overhead squat. First and foremost, I know a lot of people are immediately thinking, oh, there's a lot of uh, pull-ups here. Um, I'm gonna wear nanos uh, just like last week we did for the toes bar. That's incorrect. You should wear weightlifting shoes. Weightlifting shoes will drastically increase your upright torso position, which allows you to use your midline and your upper back to hold the bar over your head as opposed to your shoulders. Um, anytime you lean forward uh, in an overhead squat, you are really putting a tremendous amount of torque and pressure fatiguing the shoulders, which will then translate to grip fatigue and you want to avoid that as long as possible, the way to do that is wear your weightlifting shoes. They are about a pound. Even the heaviest ones weigh about a pound, maybe a few more ounces than that. If that is so heavy that it influences your toes to bar, then eat a salad instead of a sandwich or maybe skip a glass of water or something before. Um, that will make up the difference in those ounces that would affect your body weight. Um, during your overhead squats, it's super important to make sure that your belly stays tight and you continue to breathe. Uh, going back to the good posture, uh, that connects to the weightlifting shoes. And the other thing that, if, if your mobility and uh, skill set allows it, to narrow your grip slightly. Uh, some people can jerk grip overhead squat. If you can do that efficiently and you've done it in workouts before, it's a good idea to utilize that here. If you cannot do that, you don't have that sort of mobility, you don't want to sort of try something new here in an open one. You want to do what you're normally used to, but take your snatch grip and move it in a couple inches and you'll be good to go. It will definitely help save your shoulders, all right? Uh, and the chest of bar pull-ups. The biggest thing you need to focus on here is your kip. Having a smooth, uh, tight kip uh, keeping your shoulders activated as you push away from the bar as opposed to just dropping down uh, is going to do a lot to save your grip over time. Anytime you let yourself just drop down and then reactivate, you're doing literally twice the amount of work than if you just pushed away, stayed engaged, and you can use sort of the stretch reflex principles in your, your musculature to, to help make your movement efficient and less work. Um, to get started on strategy the the there's a couple different ways you can do this there's an option a and an option b uh my recommendation is going to be the slow and steady wins the race here with the amount of time you have to complete the work okay the way it breaks down is if i do round one okay between a minute and 10 seconds of work and two minutes of work I'll have between a minute and 50 seconds of rest and one minute of rest. 
Now, what that means is, is that we are not going to just sprint through rounds one and rounds two. We are going to try to mix the rest in through the round as much as possible without putting ourselves at risk uh, for the next round.